Welcome to Amateur Hour. I'm the Brocam, and we're going to be building the K6 ARK NFED Half Wave Kit. These kits come in several varieties. Uh, I have the QRP 5 watt BNC male, but you can also get them in a uh, BNC female, uh, or you can get them in 20 watt variants uh, and an SMA variant as well. There is a, a 100 watt version, but it's been out of stock for a while. So let's jump on over to the workbench. I'm going to be building the uh, K6 ARK, the QRP variant, uh, 49 to 1 infed half wave. Uh, when it's done, it should look something like this. Uh, this is my second attempt at building. I'm going to try and salvage this one eventually, but I went ahead and just got another kit just in case I fried a capacitor or something when I was, uh, maybe I applied too much heat or something, I don't know. So uh, let's go ahead and get started trying to build this. And for this, I just printed out his, he's got some really good detailed instructions with great pictures. Um, so I just printed this out, I'm gonna follow along. So in this kit, we get some magnet wire, we get some, uh, I think this is poly stealth or equivalent to like 26 gauge maybe, it's very thin. Um, here, let's get all the uh, all the parts out. This piece is uh, if you want to do uh, I think for 40 meters I think uh, you can wind uh, make a loaded coil basically Lo loading coil. There's two pieces of heat shrink I think I believe one is to go over the unit and I can't quite remember what the second one's for. Um, there's actually three pieces of heat shrink. This right here is for the antenna stub. Then we get our uh, toroid core. We get our B and C male uh, connector. And then we get we get our board. So this is going to be the body of the board or of the matching unit. And then lastly, don't lose it. It's in the bag. I promise. Uh, did I just lose it? Nope. There it is. <laughs> that is uh, a capacitor. And actually, let me see. I don't know how far I can zoom in here to show you. This black dot right here is the capacitor. So I'm going to be leaving that in this can, this uh, tag here until it's time to actually solder it on, which I think is one of the first steps. But let's go ahead and move all this other stuff aside until we it's time to time to use it. Uh, for our first step, we need to add some solder. So it's the side without any screen printing. It says to place a small amount of solder on one pad. Let's go ahead and tin our iron here. Next we are going to grab that capacitor. We're going to remove it from this packaging. There we go. That's actually the capacitor right there. Can you see it? <laughs> it is, oh man, it is uh, just barely bigger than a couple of these dots. So what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to carefully pick up that capacitor, if I can get this to focus. Come on, focus for me. Yeah, going to carefully pick up that capacitor and place it on here. And what we're going to do is heat this uh, one side of the solder, or heat this pad that we added solder to. OK. 
Okay, let me give a little check there. Uh, I'm gonna flip this around this way, and we're going to uh, solder this side. Uh, I think I am going to do uh, a counterpoise with this. I wasn't going to originally, but uh, I've found with my other end feds that once I started putting a counterpoise on there, I, I just seemed to get better performance out of it. So I think I'm going to do that. Uh, so to do that, we need to do a couple things. We need to bridge this solder gap here where it says CP. And then we also need to uh, take our poly stealth, cut it in half, and feed the stub up into there. I'm going to strip about an eighth of an inch off. What we do is we feed up through this hole. And then uh, you can give yourself some room here until you feed it back through. Uh, and we're going to go right back down into that hole just below CP, like that. I've kind of taken the slack out, and now it's holding it in place a little bit. That'll be enough to let me let me solder it. Well, if I just tighten it up, God, I'd really love if I could lock the focus on this camera. Um, if I tighten it up. Doesn't look too bad. Oh, and I probably should have bridged this gap first. It's right next to the wire. So let's uh, see if I can do this without melting the wire. We take the remaining poly stealth and the same thing about an eighth inch of insulation from the end. So next we have the boring part. We're going to wind a toroid, this tiny little toroid. So uh, I'm gonna leave the camera out. I know it might be a little harder to see, but I'm gonna be doing a lot of this and it's gonna be hard to keep it all in a tiny frame. So we're going to uncoil this, both sides. What we need to do is make three turns, one. And uh, if, you, if you're not aware, this counts as one turn. So every time the wire passes through the center of the toroid, that is one turn. One. Oh. Two. Three. Alright, so after our three turns, we want to make a stub about an inch long. So each one of these squares is an inch. Let's take it like that. And we're going to do some uh, loops. Just gently twist it like this. Okay. And that's probably pretty good. You don't want to go too tight. You don't want to go too loose. So now we are going to wind this 20 times. Some people do it different ways. I've seen people take just a loop of this and shove it back through. But I like to just take the end of it. I feel like I'm putting less stress on the wire. And that's what will be one. Uh, so now this is where I'm going to try different. I try to do just this soldering iron, uh, 350 to 400 to burn the enamel off. And that, um, I think, is what damaged the board last time. 
Um, or I just assembled it correctly. I don't know what's wrong with the other one, but I'm gonna try scraping it off. Trim the stubs to about an inch. I guess I should have trimmed it more. I'm gonna take my scalpel here and just scrape away. Okay, so ground in and out. And what did I say? Ground in and out. Okay, so uh, I think I should have trimmed more. Okay, ground. I think I'm gonna um, trim again in here. So here's ground in and out in there. I think this is why last time I ended up soldering doing the solder iron to try to melt the enamels because I see how much <laughs> I got in here so let's try I'm gonna try scraping some off right here and then we're gonna see about putting some solder there to hold it in place good enough I'm gonna set this down on the table to do this These wire stubs are in the way. Now let's try clearing the enamel for the other pieces. Instructions say to trim these to an inch. It's, that's way too long for one. So you can trim them to an inch to work with. I would definitely do that. So you have the room to stick these in and uh, position the toroid and everything. But don't go scraping the enamel off until you find out exactly where. Then scrape the enamel off. So that one should be good to go. Okay, well that joint looks a lot better with a lot less solder. Alright, so let's do this last one. And actually, as I do this, I'm going to trim these. Let's see, I can smell the enamel on that one, so that's it's probably good for my health, right? And there we have it. That is the torret soldered onto uh, what's going to be the uh, the matching unit. So. I will come back to this in the morning. It will be but a second for you. All right, and I'm back. And now we're going to test our solder joints. Uh, this is my nicest multimeter. It's still one of pretty cheap, as you can see by the test probes and the crunchy sounds. So now we are going to test our solder joints. What we're going to do here is center pin. We should have continuity to all sides. Same thing with the ground pads. And you're not only looking for continuity, you're looking for close to zero ohm resistance so and all these are close to zero ohms so that is checking out now we're going to do the very uh nerve-wracking part which is to bend this away and going to insert our bnc connector so we're going to insert our BNC connector and it looks like I've got a bit of solder in this hole right there so pretty good you want it just kind of flush so I'm actually just gonna sit this on the table try to make sure I got a spot where my iron can get to it and my solder it 
Let's put this back in here like this. And in theory, that is a completed matching unit. Now all we have to do is supply our wire and our counterpoise. Now it says to test this, we need to place a 2400 ohm resistor between the antenna wire and ground. I don't think I have a 2400 ohm resistor, so I'm just going to use this pot. Okay, well, it's pretty close. Okay. We are connected. So I figured it out. If I can move all this in. Um, apparently, I had accidentally hit pause sweep. So the thing's working fine. Uh, went back to double check my settings. Uh, so that looks right. So now I am going to heat shrink it and um, I will need to get some wire to make the actual antenna element. I'll be cutting and tuning this in a future video, so subscribe for that. I plan on doing a 20 meter and then an extendable 40 meter link. So I don't have a big piece of wire the entire time. I can kind of just pull up what I need. And with that, I think I'm out of time for today. So thanks for sticking around for Amateur Hour 73.